Why are women, why are women rejecting the soft guy era narrative? I see more people getting in their feelings as a result of this than I have in a long time. I've seen people getting into their feelings when you when that conversation first started when people I think Kevin Samuels pretty much popularized it when he was asking what do you bring to the table I've seen people getting into their feelings when a 50 50 conversation came along I see a lot of people having a conversation about this stupid 4b movement this 4b movement is so dumb because it's basically the rejection of me. every time I click somebody's profile on Instagram or TikTok when y'all send me these videos to review of the 4b movement and stuff it's always some some bigums. It's always a bigum or a person that you've seen that's obviously had a lot of problems in their lifetime and they made a lot of bad decisions. And so now they all saying, I read one comment yesterday and it said, let's embrace the 4B movement and only support other women and forget men. And it's like, what is that? I don't understand it. Like, I don't even understand. One of the reasons why it's very difficult for me me to even get in, on board with this whole black culture thing, and this is before we get into the show. We're about to get into the show. I just want to get my thoughts off. One of the reasons why it's so difficult for me to get into this whole black culture and we don't believe in alienating everybody, we just believe in supporting ourselves, is because you do. You literally cut yourself off and you alienate yourself from other people and other things when you only champion one thing. I don't even know how you can be a passport anybody. And I ain't even talking about passport bros or passport sis. I don't know how you can say, yeah, man, I'm this or I'm that. But then you basically going over and experiencing and adopting and even having sex with people from other cultures. It literally makes no sense to me. Oh, man, but I'm all for the involvement of black people, but I only want to have sex and I only want to have kids with others. With lady boys over in Thailand. Don't you know that lady boys can't have kids? It makes no sense. You want to pour money into other things. And I'm just talking about the hypocritical nature of what people say and why people say some of the things that they say, right? But see, think about this. Life is supposed to be ever evolving and more colorful based off of your experiences. The negative experiences empower you and they make you better and they make you stronger and it shows you what not to do and then you leapfrog off of that in order to continue to be more successful, okay? The positive experiences and the things that you you learn in life is supposed to make your life that more much more fruitful and productive. So why would I then reject an entire group of people or an entire race of people or an entire experience or an entire type of food or an entire opportunity don't you know that you miss your blessings when you cut off other people man i only want to do business with black people okay well then you could be a dollar millionaire or you could be a thousandaire instead of being a millionaire because god may have placed this other guy in your path to be able to give you a leg up or give you an opportunity but you rejected him only because of things that he couldn't control or because you already had a bias or a preconceived notion of what you thought that that person was about just based off of the color of their skin or their gender or something stupid or the industry that they in or the state that they live in. I see people all the time and they come up here and they say dumb stuff like, yeah, man, don't you know that uh, Mississippi is racist? Now, if I had never been, if I had never experienced it for myself, then I wouldn't even have realized how awesome the people are and the fact that it's not racist. I would say that my experience down here in Mississippi and then I've also traveled to different places around it. And New Orleans from here is only a little bit over an hour away. I see more interracial couples down here than I actually see over in Miami, than I see in Atlanta, than I see up north in New York, and even over in L.A. and in California. They don't care down here. They trying to eat good food. I see the people barbecuing outside at the gas station. And I'm like, oh, man, that's dope. So I went and got a burger from the barbecue spot the little it wasn't a food truck it was like he pulled up with a grill and everybody was having a good time so we kicked it with the people they got their southern draw you know what i'm saying the women is cool the men is cool but if you let people tell you or paint a narrative oh man i bet you won't go with none of these southern states or these sundown towns and you get down there and they'd be like hey how the neighbor don't nobody care about what you think 
your internet preconceived notions, and this is one of the reasons why I set out to live my life like an open book, even though I'm a little bit more reserved and I don't vlog as much anymore uh, because I like to live my life offline just as much as I do have to create online. If you haven't gotten out and seen it for yourself, if I haven't traveled to some of these places and seen a lot of these places and not just the popular places, but the, the places that's not necessarily seen as much as other people would, I would have this jaded, preconceived, biased perspective towards life and people. And it's not until you experience other things and other people that you realize that you're just stuck in your own little bubble. You don't know nothing about nothing. Most of these people have not been out the country. That's a fact. Most people haven't even really visited one or two places outside of their own state, let alone their own city. You're a product of your environment. You're a product of your hood. And the only people that you know is the people that you see with these weird talking points that can't even give you a real rounded, well-rounded view and an unbiased view of what experiences are, right? And so let me bring it back to the original conversation about people rejecting the soft guy era, right? Because you do realize that they basically trolling y'all and they showing you who you are by trolling you with the whole drizzle, drizzle, soft guy era. Now, you're going to never hear me say that on no comments. I'm never going to just randomly say, oh, drizzle, drizzle. I'm not saying no ditty. I'm not saying none of that. I know y'all want to go with whatever the popular trend is. I'm not doing it. But they basically just trolling y'all and they helping y'all to understand how stupid you look. When you say, I want to be in this era, I want to be in this era as a woman, or you use men for resources, but then at the same time, you say that you want to be equal or you want to compete with them. And then I seen a woman that I did a reaction video to that don't even drop until later on the day. And she was talking about how guys are sassy whenever it is that they reject a woman or they start to hold a woman accountable based off of the fact that she got her own money. And I'm like, who cares that you got your own? I don't know any guy. That says, oh, man, she got her own money. I don't like her. It's not until you lead with that in order to try to emasculate or prove that you're on the same level as or equal to the person that you're supposed to be in a relationship with that a guy then rejects you because he don't like your bad attitude. It's not that he don't like the fact that you're productive. You could be. A, I know plenty of productive women that come from other cultures that absolutely is phenomenal wives, a person that I work with. Very, very much a very, very stern person when it comes to being productive um, in corporate America. And then when you meet her outside of there, outside of her job, she's a family woman. She has fun and all of this stuff. And it's like, it's not until you lead with that outside of the workplace or what you do in your attitude that that men then start to reject who you are. It's like, why would you go up to somebody and say, I got my own money? Okay, that's a part of being a good, responsible adult. We all supposed to have our own money. I mean, I may pay for you or you may pay for me, but you don't see me saying, yeah, I got my own money. That's not what people do. And I've never in real life seen a guy or seen a person reject a person based off of the fact that they are a productive human being, whether you're a woman or a man. That makes no sense whatsoever. But you're going to see them spill this narrative and you're going to see them continue to say these things and all it's designed to do is to keep you distracted and by yourself, because when you're by yourself, you are literally fooled. That's the part that people don't understand. And because I don't have time to go and break it down because we're going to get to the other parts of the show. When you by yourself, let me say this for all of my ladies out there. When you by yourself, you become fooled. You become more profitable. And I'm not talking about fooled just from your safety. I'm saying that you become a part of a system that then keeps other people successful. Women that are boss bees or like to lead with how great they are as a woman is nothing more than an opportunity for us to continue to profit off of your ignorance. When you take out student loans, for example, right, and you think that that's the thing that's going to give you a leg up and you spend more money than you're supposed to because you don't have any guidance and understanding, what you then become is a consumer and an interest payment for the federal government in order for us to continue to not only force you to vote a certain way, but also so you can continue to fund 
all of these social programs that we don't even like from a liberal or conservative perspective. When you are the type of person that gives in to a woman's nature to want you to spend more than you should in order for her to be able to court you or you, you to be able to court her, what you then become is a consumer in a system that is designed to keep you poor because they know that the thing that you're leading with is not going to be productive, but it just keeps more money flowing throughout the economy. So you are the person that ultimately spend all of the money, pay all of the taxes, and then you just become a consumer for a woman that's basically leveraging her body in order to get you to spend more money to take her out to eat. They hate people that don't spend money. You know why rich people are hated? It's not because they rich. Rich people are hated because they're smart with their money and they're frugal. And so it actually goes against the productivity of the system that I don't spend interest or I don't pay interest on credit cards, or I don't spend money outside of what I need to spend in order to be able to impress people that don't give a fuck about me. I'm sorry, that don't care anything about me. That's why they hate us, is because the reason that we get rich is because we're smarter with our money versus trying to prove stuff to people that don't care anything about us. When we buy stuff that's expensive, we buy it because we like it. And we don't finance it. We don't do Klarna. We don't do Afterpay. We don't pay interest on stuff that we don't need to pay interest for. And so when you start to move a little bit wiser, then you start to remove yourself from a system that then profits off of you. The reason why women are then incentivized and preached to on a regular basis they understand that you guys are consumers. If you don't think that they understand all of the data points, the talking points, how it is that they can continue to market themselves to you, it's no surprise that women, for example, are the biggest population or segment of people that continue to buy to finance homes. I'm not even going to say buy homes. Finance homes, but then at the same time, they're the biggest segment of the population that's also getting foreclosed on. It's a vicious cycle when you don't understand how you're being marketed to and your behaviors are basically contributing into the pockets of those that know. It's a vicious cycle. They're training you and you guys are training each other and they don't even have to spend no marketing dollars to do it to become consumers and financers and people that pay an extraordinary amount of money and then they try to get you to convince men to do it for you so that they can then become a part of the system that allows us to get richer and become more profitable. Your rejection of logic, your rejection of the right thing, your rejection of traditional values is literally keeping you poor. Your life decisions are keeping you poor. I sat there on a the panel last night and I told people they need to unplug and reset their mindset. They so obsessed with dating. You know what dating is? Spending money on somebody else's representative. They want you outside doing things that's not conducive for you. And the more they keep you inside of the system, the less likely you are to be successful when it comes to relationships, which just makes them more profitable because the minute that you start pulling 10 times your weight as an individual, you then start to remove yourself from the fact that other people that are then selling you things can't profit off of your distress. The poorer you are, and the dumber your decisions are, the more profitable it is for the people that then can leverage that against you. Have you thought about that? Why would you reject going half with somebody, just in concept, when this is the person that can actually help you, help you and drive you out of poverty or out of this rut? Because you, you guys together working in tandem is much more productive and profitable while driving down the cost individually. The whole idea of group economics is that we're reducing our costs and increasing the amount of money that we make to pour into the things that's more meaningful into our life. If that's not the very definition of marriage in the foundation and then building around yourself in group economics, I don't know what is. The reason why people are rejecting relationships is because the things that you are preaching or you're looking for in a spouse is wrong, which then drives you to divorce and then ultimately puts money into a system 
That's designed to keep you poor. So instead of asking the right questions and saying, how do I vet effectively so that I can be more successful, not only in my relationships, which would then reflect in my lifestyle, which would then reflect in my children, which would then re reflect in my career or whatever it is that I think is purposeful or meaningful in my life. We saying and asking all of the wrong questions that then keep us in reverse and then ultimately keep us generationally cursed because you then perpetually become a consumer for the rest of your life. But they're not going to tell you this because success and greatness comes from a mentality first that then translates into your actions. Is this too deep for y'all? Do we need to move this over to after hours? Because I know that we on a millionaire morning show, but I'm trying to help you to understand that how you think and how that translates into your daily life. And no matter what it is that we do, it all comes back down to profitability and the money. If you're okay, let me break it down to you like this and then we're going to move on with the show. If you have somebody with you, that's positive, right? And a positive person, whether it's a friend or somebody in a relationship, is the person that keeps you from jumping off the bridge. When you by yourself, you're more likely to do things that you wouldn't normally do in a group of people that can hold you accountable, right? But if you're around people that are productive, whether it's a spouse or a friend or whatever, they can literally prevent you from making somebody else a whole bunch of money by doing something different because they're holding you accountable. So the company that you keep and the people that you surround yourself with and the advice that you take on a regular basis is literally the difference between being rich, poor, life, or death. It's that simple. And so if you're not careful of who you're listening to and what is in your algorithm and the channels that you subscribe to and the content that you take in on a regular basis and the groups that you, that, that you subject yourself to, you literally are determining your fate by your culture, which is the things that shape and is the most popular for you in your life. Don't reject the thing that's best for you. Embrace it. That's all I'm saying.